Hey guys, uh, Nathaniel here again. Uh, we're doing a very long one this time with a couple of weird parts, but probably the most important one that you'll see. Uh, so this is uh, Seaborn's LM plot, linear model plot. Um, we've seen this a couple of times. Uh, we go ahead and we draw the line of best fit uh, through the points that we're given. Um, we also add a little confidence interval around these. Uh, the confidence interval is done by bootstrap. So what does that mean? That means we sample with replacement uh, from our data points, we compute a linear regression, and then we draw it on the graph. Uh, the farthest ones, I guess the, uh, we, we do this, you know, however many times, 100 times, uh, and then we go ahead and we draw the farthest one, uh, or, or sort of our 95% confidence interval band based on that. Um, so, so this is what the regression is. We're looking at how the total bill affects tip. So y uh, is the independent, x is the dependent variable. Okay. You can do a couple of things with this using Q, column, and row. Um, so if you specify the hue variable, uh, hue will of course need to be categorical. You can go ahead and you can uh, plot certain points in a different color and you'll do two regressions. One regression with it being uh, uh, a, the smoker and one being a non-smoker. You'll do three or four depending on how many categories you have in the hue. Um, you can go ahead and you can use a column in order to do this as well. Um, so in this case, you just do two different graphs uh, where the columns are smoker and non-smoker. You can specify a column and a row. So in this case, I specify the sex as a row and the column as uh, a type. So I've got, or a time. So I've got lunch in one column, dinner in the other column, male in one row, female in the other row. We get four linear regressions. And of course, you can specify all three. Uh, so hue, column, and row. Uh, so this will put... Um, uh, two regression lines on each plot, uh, four plots in total. So you can do all this. This is super great for doing multiple regressions, for doing analysis across uh, lots of categorical data points and trying to figure out if there's a relationship between the points they're in. Um, so pretty cool. Um, so what we can also do is we can do uh, linear regression against uh, categorical variables. In this case, this isn't a categorical variable, but something that's um, uh, a discrete variable. Uh, what you'll want to do when you're doing linear regression against a discrete variable is you want to add a little bit of x jitter. So the reason here being is that these points are tightly grouped on top of each other. It's sort of hard to visualize how many points are there. If you add a little bit of x jitter, you can get a sense of how many points are there. You might even want to add more x jitter in this case. Uh, so this is this is fairly nice in order to do this. The regression is still done on the base points, so it's it's not done. Uh, on the jittered points. Uh, that would be a little bit silly. Um, another way you can do this, which I like a little bit better especially, is adding in an estimator. So we estimate what the mean is for each of these points, and then we draw confidence intervals around them. Um, the confidence intervals are done via bootstrap. Again, Seaborn loves bootstrap. You're going to see bootstrap all over the place. Um, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's a super easy way to do these sorts of things, and, and super good. Um, so again, they take, uh, they sample with replacement from the data points uh, where you have six people in your party. Uh, they go ahead and calculate the mean uh, for all those samples, um, and they go ahead and plot out the 95% confidence bounds for those means. <clears throat> okay. You can control the confidence intervals of these small things. Uh, you can also control the confidence interval of the um, of the line itself. So, in th so in this case, we can also say. CI equals uh, 99, let's do 98, right? So the confidence interval around our line is a little bit bigger. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. I guess let's make it smaller. Let's make it smaller in this case. Let's make it uh, 50, Ooh, 20, really, really, really small, right? The confidence interval around our line is tiny. This is controlled by confidence interval CI. XCI will only be controlling the estimator's confidence interval. So the confidence interval around our estimators, these point estimates here, is uh, a 50% confidence interval. Okay. If we have non-discrete data points, we can make them somewhat discrete by putting bins. So we'll go ahead and we'll put these, uh, well, these bins here using just sort of a classic histogram binning technique. And then we go ahead and we do confidence intervals around them as well. Uh, so in this case, we bend them and then we look at their mean. If, if you add in an X estimator that's different from mean, like median, it will do the exact same thing. Um, and if you use Bootstrap, you can do this for any estimator. Uh, that's kind of why they use Bootstrap here. Okay. Okay, that, 
that was some confusion. Uh, at least when I was reading the documentation, I had to experiment around a little bit in order to get all these sorts of things. Um, I don't find doing this X bins too useful. It's too necessary at all. I do like this a lot. I do like adding an X estimator in, especially when you have these categorical points. X jitter just doesn't do it for me. I can't really tell. Um, the estimator gives me a much better uh, feel for the dispersion of these points. Um, also, controlling that confidence interval is, is super nice. So, so all these, these tips and tricks are super useful. Um, this one, maybe not as much. Now we're going to load the Anscombe Quartet dataset. So this dataset is famous because it has a lot of similar statistics. So the mean, the standard deviation, all of these things are very, very similar. However, it has very different looks. So we can go ahead and we can plot this. So this is the basic one. This is the one that is most linear. So we have some normal noise around uh, a data set that's mostly driven by a linear com or uh, a linear relationship. Uh, I add in some extra stuff here. Um, so the next data set is obviously nonlinear. This is a quadratic data set. Um, and notice when we plot our linear line through this, this looks awful. And if you look at the confidence intervals around it, it will also look pretty bad. What we can do is we can change the order. If we change it to be an order two, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll plot an order two polynomial of these guys. So we'll include both one and two. Uh, so in this case, the x1 is probably super small and x2 is a little bit bigger, where x2 is uh, the dependent variable squared. Okay, So we can change the order that we can do. What we can also do is we can use robust regression. Uh, so in this case, notice we have this one outlier here, uh, which is messing up our regression line. If we go ahead and we set uh, robust equal to true, ta-da! So this, this will make a, a much nicer regression. The idea behind this is it de-weights points that are extremely far away. Um, be careful with using robust equal to true. This, this makes the so previously, the second order, that's totally fine. This falls within the scope of linear regression really nicely. Robust equals to true, it does not. This makes it a much more timely process. So if you're doing this on a very big data set, this will take a lot longer to do. Next thing that we can do is we can do logistic regression. So in this case, we want to see if someone did a big tip or didn't do a big tip. So we add a new column called big tip. Uh, so this will be over 15%. So notice, um, there is some sort of relationship between the size of the bill and, and the bigger of the tip. Um, generally, if you have larger parties, you're forced to do larger tips. Um, so doing a linear regression certainly doesn't cut it. What we can do is we can set logistic equal to true. And this will do a logistic regression on this exact same thing. Uh, notice this takes a lot longer. This is because log logistic regression is not just a simple uh, matrix multiplication. is isn't closed form. Um, so here you go. It also does confidence intervals around the logistic regression. So again, it had to fit like 50 uh, logistic regressions in order to get these confidence intervals. Um, so, so this is pretty cool. Um, the next thing that we can do is we can do LOIS, or locally weighted linear regression. Um, so in this case, this is a non-parametric linear regression. I'll include a, a link in the documentation. It's pretty cool. Um, so you can sort of see the shape changes as we go along. It's not exactly linear. What we can also do is we can take the log of the x's even before we do this. This is kind of cool. So what this will do is this will make uh, this fancy logistic relationship here, but it will plot the original x's scattered. So this, this is the original x values. Um, I like this a lot. It actually seems to capture this trend almost as, as well as a uh, linear regression will do. So we'll stick with a logistic, uh, this isn't a logistic regression, but a log reg uh, transformed regression. Um, you can add on a truncated uh, variable. This was all not really well specified. So what this will do is it will look at the beginning of your data set and look at the end of the data set and we'll stop the linear regression drawing at the beginning and the end of the data set. So it's shown here. And then finally we can use an x partial. Um, so if you think there are confounding variables, so in this case I choose size. Um, the idea behind size is that uh, I guess this would be super useful in a logistic regression, but the idea behind size is that size may in fact uh, dictate tip more than um, uh, more, more than the size of the bill, maybe. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. It's any of your confounding variables. You would go ahead and put in x partial. Um, and these will get regressed out, uh, right? And so these will, these will be added as terms. They won't be visualized anywhere else, but they will get regressed out. And you'll go ahead and you'll see exactly what the, 
what the final thing is here. It might be interesting to see if this will actually work with a logistic regression as well. Um, let's, let's go back up here and see. So we have this logistic regression. Let's, let's go ahead and, and use the x partial of size as well. So uh, x underscore partial uh, equals size. Also notice in our logistic regression we added in y jitter as well. Now this can be useful if you do have, yeah, it did work, it did work. Um, so so you, might, you might conclude that, that size might be a confounding variable, especially in parties larger than six, they're almost always going to be um, paying above that 15% mark because they might be forced to by the restaurant. So we can regress out these confounding variables. One thing that I am not sure about is that there is, there is technically a y partial here. I'm not sure, uh, this, this might just be outside of my capacity, but if you guys totally add comments here, I'm not exactly sure what y partial does. Um, so so that, that, would, that would be wonderful. Um, but I hope this has helped. This will basically cover all of your basic regression needs and plotting them. It's super nice. It, I mean, plotting the confidence intervals around your regression is incredibly helpful. Doing that previously meant that you had to actually do the bootstrap yourself, and then you actually had to draw these like bands around them, which is which is a pain in the wooey. So, uh, so that's that's incredibly helpful. Also, plotting these multiple linear regressions up here, um, excuse me, that we that we were doing with this factor plot. This is also incredibly helpful. So previously you'd actually have to, I mean, it wasn't a ton of work, but you'd have to write a nasty for loop and do all these visualizations there. Um, so I hope this was good. I hope this explains some of the weird parts that aren't covered well in the tutorial. I hope this gave you a little bit more of an intuition of what's going on under the hood, because they don't really talk about what these confidence intervals are especially. Um, so, so hopefully this has been helpful. Um, as always, I guess I'll see you again, and it's been a pleasure.